This is Effectsim. It's an application I built to simulate and control my Christmas lights display this year. You can lay out the strings of lights on a 3D mesh and then use a sequencer to design complex sequences of effects before spending the time building the display for real. Once complete, you can run your display through a playlist of sequences. And once you've simulated your display, you can build it for real. This is what mine looks like this year. Along with thousands of dumb lights, I also constructed 10 20 meter strings consisting of 200 individually addressable LEDs, each controlled by a tiny ESP32. When played at night in concert with a collection of smart plugs to control the dumb lights, it's a really impressive thing to watch. It took me over 10 months to design and build the string lights and create and debug the software to control them. And it's probably one of the most complex projects I've ever built. And in this video, I want to take you through it all. The hardware design choices and the steps I took to construct the LED light strings, the convex powered software I wrote to control it all, and detail some of the issues that I encountered along the way and how I solved them. So buckle up as this is gonna be a very different but special video from my usual. So I hope you enjoy it. So make sure you grab yourself a lovely warming cup of tea, drop me a like and sub, and we'll get into it. So this whole thing kicked off about 10 months ago, back in February. I've been entering my local community's likes competition for the past couple of years with what I thought was a pretty decent display, but let's be honest, it was fairly dumb. By dumb, I mean the lights were just the standard fare from the local hardware store. You know, the kind of type. They come in various lengths, controlled by some basic circuitry in the plug, maybe two modes, dimmed, flickering, or flashing, or something like that. What I really wanted was to have each LED on each string be independently controlled. That way I could make a much more impressive complex display that could actually be synchronized together. And with the prize pool this year being what it was, I was more than happy to invest a little bit of cash to get the right lights for the job. So my requirements were, one, individually addressable LEDs that can be controlled by my own software. Two, support long runs. 20 meter plus, preferably, I wanted to cover quite a large area in my property and I didn't want to have to manage lots and lots of small runs. Three, be outdoor stroke weatherproof because the Aussie climate and sun and salty wind is pretty harsh here. And four, not totally break the bank. Preferably, I wanted to spend less than about a thousand Aussie dollars, which is about 650 US dollars for the entire setup. I naively assumed that this would be kind of straightforward that there'll be plenty off the shelf options to choose from. But after spending many evenings scouring the web, AliExpress and of the various online stores, I kind of sadly came to the conclusion that there just simply wasn't any available ready-made options for me. So being an engineer's engineer, I decided I'm gonna have to build it myself. Oh, and by the way, if you do know of something that I could have used uh, that fit my, fits my requirements, please drop me a comment down below because I'm gonna to be totally exploring options again for next year's refresh. Anyways, once I've accepted that there was no off the shelf solution, I was gonna to have to figure out what hardware I was gonna need and then start experimenting. The first step was figuring out which LEDs to use. After chatting with a friend who knows way more about electrical engineering than I do, and no, I'm not talking about AI in this case, I learned that the standard five volt LED strips just weren't gonna cut it for this project. You see, all wires suffer from what's known as voltage drops as they get longer. I kind of like to think of it as like a garden hose losing water pressure the further it runs. So over the distance I had in mind, you know, 20 meters plus, I was gonna to need to pump up the voltage a little bit to compensate for that length. So that meant going with either 12 volt or even 24 volt instead of the standard five volt. So even though there are 24 volt individually addressable outdoor lights out there, they do seem quite expensive and I'm not entirely sure how bright they would be. So I decided for this project, I was gonna go with 12 volt lights instead. At this point, I was kind of hoping they would be able to handle the 20 or 30 meter runs without too much voltage drop, which would cause the lights to discolor. And the listing says that they're IP67 rated so and designed for outdoor use. So fingers crossed they would survive the outdoor summer, the Aussie outdoor summer, but um, we'll see how they hold up. To power them, I knew I was gonna need a solid 12 volt supply. So after digging around a bit more, I settled on this one. It's outdoor rated and should be plenty of power for what I needed for the 20 or 30 meter string run. So then the next question is, how was I gonna drive the data to address each of the LEDs on each of the strings? I was gonna need some sort of computer or controller. 
My initial thought was to use a Raspberry Pi or something like that, which I've used in past projects, but my electronics expert friend informed me that that was gonna be massively overkill for what I wanted. And a much cheaper way to go would be to use the ESP32. And to power the ESP32, I was gonna need one of these guys, which does a DC to DC conversion to step down from a 12 volt supply, my power supply, to the five volt supply that the ESP32 needs. So then with a couple of other bits and pieces that I was gonna need, I calculated the total bill of materials was gonna be about $54 Aussie dollars, which is about 35 US dollars per 20 meter run, which seemed quite acceptable to me. Now, I'm gonna spare you the months and months of experimentation I did here, but needless to say, it was a lot of faffing around and testing everything. I knew I didn't wanna drop hundreds of dollars on hardware until I validated it was all gonna work properly. I wanted to make sure that I could power it all properly and make sure that the power supplies could handle the load and I also wanted to test exactly how long I could make the runs, whether it's 20 meters, 30 meters or more. I ended up with 20 meters as a sweet spot as I noticed that beyond that, I started to get voltage drops, which would cause some of the LEDs to dim or change color, as you can see here. I worked out that 20 meters on full brightness was gonna be an absolute max of about 30 watts per string. So my 60 watt power supply should be plenty. So now with all that experimentation complete, I decided to just go for it and order enough hardware to make 10 separate strings. Again, I will spare you the many, many evenings of work I, I spent putting this all together. But in short, it was a lot of late nights, cutting wires, tripping insulation, connecting components, and generally just doing a terrible job at soldering everything together. By mid-September, I had all the hardware sorted. So now I just had to worry about the software. And software is something that I've been doing my entire career. So that should be easy, right? Right? So at this point, I had some work in hardware, but how was I actually gonna be able to send data to each of these LEDs along the string? Well, fortunately for me, this, to some degree, is a very well-trodden path. There are a number of libraries out there that are designed to drive LED light strips that will run on an ESP32, and one of the most popular ones is something called WLED. Now, I personally hadn't heard of WLED before starting this project, but I've got to admit, it's freaking awesome. It's packed with a whole bunch of effects and features built right in and super flexible for whatever you want to do with lights. That said, I, being me, wanted to push things a little bit further as my goal was to be able to combine multiple strips together so they could act as a single unified strip. I also wanted to choreograph complex sequences of effects and have other parts of my display, like switches and plugs, turn on and off as part of those complex sequences. So what I wanted to be able to do is be able to drive the LEDs from an external source instead. Fortunately though, WLED does come with a bunch of different interfaces that let you control it programmatically. So I knocked together a quick prototype using the JSON API that WLED provides. And success, I can now control the LEDs from my own software at will, a great first step. Now the issue is that what I want to do is create complex animated sequence of effects, which meant hitting this JSON API 60 times a second. So yeah, that was gonna be way too much overhead for these poor little ESP32s to handle. Fortunately though, WLED does have other interfaces and I tried a couple before landing on this one, the Distributed Display Protocol or DDP. It does exactly what I needed, which was a low level way to drive all 200 LEDs per strip at 60 frames a second, thanks to UDP sockets. So I knocked out a quick prototype and got things working. Awesome, I can now drive all 200 pixels at a tasty 60 frames per second. So now I've validated the hardware and the basics interface to the LEDs. It's just a matter of scaling this up. All right, so finally we get to talk about EffectSim. It's a convex powered app that I built both to simulate and drive my lights display. I'll take you through a quick demo now of the features before we talk about some of the interesting code related aspects of the app. Hello, Mike from the future here. Now, I've decided to remove this section where I go through EffectSim and the code underneath it and move it into a separate video which I'm gonna be releasing very soon into the new year, so get subscribed for that. It's uh, a bit of a shame because it's really, really cool, <laughs> this application that I've built to control these crazy lights display. And some of the code underneath it is awesome where I've got like this local first model 
architecture and like this headless React runtime that runs inside a bun and all that kind of stuff. It's very, very cool. So you're not gonna wanna miss that for sure. But this video was getting over half an hour long and it was just getting a bit too long for what I wanted. So uh, make sure you get subscribed because yes, it's coming in the new year very, very soon. Okay, now I have the hardware and the software to drive it. It's time to lay out my display on my back garden. Now, again, like everything in this project, I will save you all the details because this was a long-winded two-day affair that I had to enlist my father to help with. We laid out all the strings around the garden and up and around the pillars of my house and we kind of stuck it all down with gaffer tape and then wired them all together in these weatherproof boxes. Then we laid out the thousands of other LEDs from the older dumb lights I still had from the previous years on the roof and we also set up some of the feature pieces that I kept from the past years. Now, as I wanted everything to be controllable from Effectsim, I used six of these Atom smart plugs, which uh, involved a little bit of setting up and configuring. Finally, with everything done and configured, I finally had a working display. Let's take a look. Okay, so issues. This project has definitely not been all smooth sailing. I've run into some pretty major issues along the way that let's talk about. First up is Wi-Fi, which I half expected might be an issue, but I didn't realize how much of a big deal this was gonna be. For my early experiments, I knew that the little ESP32s controlling each string only had a fairly small Wi-Fi antenna. I thought I could solve this with some cheap Wi-Fi repeaters and I even tested it in the back garden during the prototyping stage. Great, I thought. That should scale up to all 10 strings, no problem. Wrong. After spending two days laying out all the strings and starting to integrate them, I noticed that some of the strings would connect to the Wi-Fi and some wouldn't. Some of the strings would partially light, others would fully light. It was just a big confusing mess. And after several days of fighting, <laughs> I had almost given up. And I called, but I called in my, the big guns in the form of my electronics mate again. And what he did was help me actually properly set up my Wi-Fi um, access points and everything inside of my network and adjust the, pan the channels and just generally try and prevent noise to the, to the ESP32s outside. He also let me these pretty cool Ubiquiti uh, Wi-Fi access points, which I put two of in my back garden on these poles to help with the Wi-Fi coverage. Fun fact, the specific angle of these antennas is actually super important. It seems to, as it, we, t we tested this and it seems to massively improve the Wi-Fi strength for some of the strings at least. Anyways, to cut a long story short, we finally got them all working, at least semi-reliably. The really weird thing that I'm not entirely sure about is that the signal seems to improve once the sun goes down. Does anybody know, is this something to do with temperature? Does the Wi-Fi travel further when it's colder or is there resistance in the wires or something? I'm confused. If you know, let me know down below in the comments. Okay, so <laughs> this one really is a bit of a derp kind of moment. And I should have realized this from the start, to be honest. You see, my house, the whole reason for doing this is the lights display backs on the canal. And um, you have boats coming past looking at the display. And so after getting everything working, I went on the first boat cruise around the canals with some friends and noticed a major problem with my display. You see, right from the beginning, I wanted to create a really cool sequence display that would turn the traditional dumb lights on and off via the smart plugs. And although I got all that working, the big problem is the boat goes past pretty quick. So that means people don't really have much time to sit there and watch a multi-minute light display. This is a huge issue because if all the lights turn off and then gradually turn back on as a part of a multi-minute sequence, then the 30 seconds or so that the boat is outside, they could see just basically a dark house for most of the time. And people would think that the display <laughs> is kind of lame. And this is unfortunately kind of annoying. And honestly, I should have seen it coming. So the solution is to rethink my sequences entirely. 
So now I've changed it so that the dumb lights are on all the time, basically making the smart plugs entirely useless. Well, wasted all the time doing that. Um, and the sequences now have far fewer dark periods, so it's mostly bright most of the time. This is unfortunately, to me, less visually striking, since there's less contrast between the dark and the bright periods, but it does increase the chances that the boat that's going past will see a bright, impressive display, and therefore, hopefully, I'll get more votes. <laughs> ah well, it still looks good, so no worries. Whew, okay, all right, well, I'm gonna have to leave it here for now. I do hope you enjoy this video. This project has definitely been one of the longest and most challenging that I've ever worked on, but has been an absolute blast and I've learned so much along the way. And if you enjoyed this video and enjoy my display, I'd really appreciate a like and sub. Oh, and definitely do subscribe because I'm definitely gonna be doing a peel back the covers and have a look at some of the really cool convex related uh, code underneath effect sim in my next video. But for now, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I'll see you in 2026. Until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.